Hello again. This is the last of the workbook tutorials for Southampton Solent University students, but there is going to be some more coming up on hatching and that kind of thing. As you can see, I've got my three floor plans. I've done a bit of hatching here on the ground floor. I've put my sanitary ware into my bathrooms. But what I've also done here is add in some extra bits. I've started developing a section for the house. I've also done some work on elevations because I need some elevations to show you how we can use layouts to do all sorts of different things in our drawings. And layouts is what today's tutorial is about. When you start a drawing, you usually have two layouts. If you click on one of those, you'll find usually that it's an A4 sheet and it'll usually have one viewport inside it. A viewport is this purple thing. Supposing we don't want an A4 sheet. Well, if you point at the layout tab and do a right click, you get a menu of stuff. And the thing that we want is the page setup manager. I'm going to modify this so that instead of being an A4 drawing, it's an A1 drawing. I'm going using DWG to PDF, so the drawing format to a PDF format. My plot style is monochrome, and if you open this up, you see you've got a lot of different alternatives. These .ctb alternatives relate the color values that you've used to different line weights. So red will be one line weight, yellow will be a different line weight, etc. Monochrome just prints out a black and white drawing with some exceptions. The paper size over here is where I can change my paper size. So if I scroll up until I find A1, and then I need to set it to landscape format, because usually with A1 drawings we'd use landscape format unless there was a very good reason not to. If I OK that, you'll see that the format of the page has changed quite a lot. The viewport's still there, but it's much smaller in the corner, and we've got a lot more space to play with. The black dotted lines, that's telling us what the extent of our printable area is. Now we can start to think about putting a border on this drawing. So we'll need a text layer to be open. We need to draw a rectangle, and we want it to be reasonably even to both sides. I'm just doing this by eye, but you could, if you like, do it to a specific size. You'll see that my viewport is overhanging my border. Well, that won't do. But the great thing about viewports is that they're very easy to alter. So if we just grab a corner, we can change the size of it. Now we can start to think about what we want to see in this drawing. Let's escape to have everything unselected and have a look see what we've got. We've got a viewport which is like a window into our main drawing. We've got a sheet of paper, you can see the edges of our sheet of paper, and we've got lots and lots and lots of space. The first thing we need to understand is the difference between paper space and model space. At the moment we're in paper space mode, it says paper down here, so anything that we draw is actually on the surface of our sheet of paper. If we want to draw anything inside our drawing, if we double click inside the drawing viewport, we're actually now in model space and you'll see that the note down here has changed as well. Anything I draw is actually appearing in model space, not paper space. Anything you draw in model space will be there in your original drawing. So we've got that funny shape there. If we go back to the model space tab and zoom out, there it is. So from here we can delete that, go back into our layout and lo and behold it's gone. One of the things that's most important though with architectural drawing is being able to draw to scale. And to set a scale for our viewport, we use this tab down here. If we click on the arrow, we get a whole lovely list of scales. And if we use 1 to 50 to start with, that's blown up our drawing an awful lot. I can find the bits of drawing, go for the ground floor plan. Now I'm going to double click outside and make this viewport a bit bigger so we can see the whole thing. What I can do from here is copy the viewport using the copy command. If I grab hold of a corner, I can go copy, copy. I've got three floors. So if I move this sideways, oops, okay, that was a classic error in AutoCAD. I was wanting to zoom in so that I could see these lines clearer and line them up. But because I was still in my viewport, it was zooming the viewport, not the piece of paper. If I change that back to 1 to 50, pull it back down to roughly where it's supposed to be, and then I can change to this viewport and do the same with my second floor. If I double click outside my model space, I'm now in paper space, and I can zoom in, double click inside, and just move things around so that they line up properly. So now we've got our three floors nicely lined up. Move those up a little, I think. 
Now we need to add a title block to this drawing, and this is the section from the workbook that shows the title block. It's in a Word document, and I'll blur it up a little so that you can see the actual sizes. So we're looking at a space, something like 100 millimetres by 110, and we've got a bunch of spaces for the various bits of our drawing titles. Here's our AutoCAD drawing. We'll move up so that we can see this bottom corner. I'll start with construction setup and draw myself a box starting in this corner at minus 100, 110. So that's the space my title block's going to take up in the drawing. If I now start with a line here, I can offset that 16 mil. And we go a couple of times. Now, then we've got a 28, a 30 and a 32. That sets up the outline of our title block. Now what I'm going to do is offset all of these lines a couple of millimetres downwards and I'll offset the outside a couple of millimetres inwards. So that's going to set out the parameters for our text positioning. Now we'll change to the text layer, draw some lines and I'll copy that. If I had an, an office logo it would go in here so um, let's go to my annotate. I'll just pick the standard text style going to open up quick properties so that here's where I can change my text height and I'm going to make that quite high because I want it to be very visible. Bingo. And then if I double click on the text I should be able to do the next bit at a different height and that would be my office address. Click outside that. Now I need another text box which will start here. That all looks rather small but if I now check on that I can change this to five millimeters high and that's looking reasonable. This is going to be the drawing. I want the title of the space to be very small so I'm going to take that down to 1.5 millimeters which is about as small as you can go and still have text legible and I will change that to five millimeters and I could have another line the next text box gets a little bit more complicated because that's where we're going to put who drew it, when it was drawn and the scale it's at. It's going to start with drawn by a tab, date, and then we need another tab telling us the scale of the drawing. Now we change to 5mm text and it's 24th. And actually this text is rather big for what we want it to do so I'm going to change it down to 3.5 because text does tend to look better if it's not over large. Okay, now we need another last text box and this is going to be the drawing number. You always have space for a revision reference in a drawing. We'll use the unit code. Usually the first number would be the job number and we'll call it drawing 1. Okay, it doesn't look dramatically smart, but it's possible to pull in images and things if you want to put a logo inside the box. If I turn off my construction setup layer, you can see that we've now got a reasonably respectable looking architectural title block. And it's got all the correct information in it. So what I can do from here is continue on to make some more drawings. If I point at the layout name and do a right click again, open up the move or copy option. If I click on create a copy and put it before layout 2, we can OK that. Copy of it here. If I then go to page setup, I can modify this and turn this into an A2 drawing. All the other settings will remain the same. So if we OK that, close that. Our drawings got smaller, our viewports and all sorts of things are hanging off the edges. So the first thing I'll do is move this to where we want it because it doesn't make sense not to. Then I'll alter my borders to suit my new drawing. I just need to bring those inside my textbook areas. And now I can change my viewports. I've now created my new viewports at 1 to 100 and lined them all up nicely on a construction line. But because I've created a copy, it's brought my whole of my title block in with it. So that's made life considerably easier because I don't have to redraw it again. When I come to do an A3 I'll probably scale that down so it all looks a bit smaller and appropriate to the size of the drawing. What I can do now is bring in or create some extra viewports and I'm going to show you some of the smarty pants stuff you can do with them. First thing I'll do is copy this one and I'm going to copy it downwards, go inside it and move up so I can see my elevation. And I want my elevation to relate to that particular plan. So the two are lined up with each other and you can see that the plan relates to the elevation and also I'm showing a little bit at the side of the elevation so that you can see it is that half of a pair of semis. 
What I can do from here is copy that to give myself some of my other elevational information. And this one's going to need to be a longer viewport because what we'll see in this is the long elevation. And I can tailor these to whatever, however I want them to look. Hopefully you can see that I'm starting to think about how the design of my drawing sheet is going to look. So I want a gap between viewports. So I've got front elevation, side elevation, rear elevation. I drew this rather garish hatching on here. If I switch that hatching off, that's my design hatching. Obviously I've lost all my hatching in my other viewports as well. So we'll undo that. If I double click in this viewport, I can freeze out that layer in this viewport only. And that's using this command here. Click on that button, the rest of the hatching stays on. If I go into model space, the hatching's still there in model space. But within that viewport, it's disappeared. I'm going to copy this over to here. I'm going to zoom in on that construction. I'll put that in the middle of my viewport and change this to say 1 to 20 so that I can see this little bit of construction that I've drawn. It's not the most brilliant bit of construction I have to say but it's better than nothing. Illustrates a point. I'm going to get rid of the construction setup. I'm going to turn on the component layers that I'd created and I'd also created myself a special hatch construction layer which I shall also turn on. Design hatch is switched off in this layer and I'm also going to turn off my design walls in this layer. Okay, so here I've got my brickwork, my insulation and my block work all shown in this one bit of the drawing. So that's one thing we can do. Another thing we can do is use shapes to create viewports. So if I move into my viewports layer and draw a circle, if I go to the view ribbon, you can see that we've got lots of different stuff here and this is the viewports panel. At the moment it's showing creating a rectangular viewport but it's got a little arrow so that means there's more options. I can create a viewport from an object. So if I click on that one the command line's asking me to select the object. I'm going to use that. So now I've got a nice round viewport and I could use that if I zoom into it to show some detail maybe of the bathroom which I've started to set up. We take that to 1 to 50. We're showing some of the detail inside our house. The last thing that I want to show you about viewports is how we can lock them. If you click on the quick properties here, it brings up some information about the viewport and the second thing on it is display locked. If I lock the display, it will remain like that permanently. Click on the next one, lock the viewport. If my viewport's locked, I can go into the thing, I can draw a few random lines, which will be on my model space drawing. If I delete them there, they'll have gone in the viewport. But what I can't do in the viewport is zoom in and out, because I've locked the scale of it, which can be really useful. What you will find is that probably every plotter that you use will have slightly different settings and slightly different boundaries. So you often need to adjust the location of the title block, the position of your border, to suit the plotter that you're using for any given drawing. It is important that plans line up with each other. It's important that elevations line up with each other. Right click and rename and I'm just going to call this A2 landscape. Go back to this one and call it A1 landscape. The final thing I'm going to do is save this and then I'm going to do a save as and instead of doing it as an AutoCAD 2010 drawing I'm going to save it as a drawing template. I may need to tell it where to put it. If you're in university, you'll need to put it on your U drive and save it. Because it's a template, it should be empty. I'm going to select everything and delete it. So my model space is now empty. I'll do a save again. So now I've got a drawing template that I can use whenever I want a new drawing. And just to show you, a new drawing, I can click on open that up. I've got all my layers that I've made before. I've got my layouts that I've made already with my title blocks all set up. So I've got a standard drawing that I can use anytime I want to create a new drawing in AutoCAD and everything's set up ready for me. Thanks very much for spending your time with me. Goodbye.